hang on to your hat and we're going to find out uh, what model railroading and uh, CD player have in common. Well, I have a little project here that uh, I've been wanting to do for some while. This here is a whistle. It's a vintage uh, Tyco whistle. But uh, you can see my problem. The thing is spinning in there, but it won't spin fast enough to make the whistle sound. This is supposed to be an old time locomotive whistle, steam locomotive whistle, but it just won't spin fast enough. And I have taken this motor all apart and cleaned it out and I got it to work for a little while but then it quit working again. So what I'm thinking is that we're going to do this. We're going to take a motor like this which you've seen me use one out of a Sony PlayStation controller to uh, make a locomotive work. Well I'm going to take one of these motors and I have one here that actually came out of a CD player. And I'm thinking that maybe, just maybe, I can mount this puppy right down in here. What do you think? And this thing will definitely spin up fast enough to make that whistle play. So hold on to your hats and uh, don't let anybody near your CD players while you're not looking. So I'm gonna try and see if uh, I can do this with you looking over my shoulder and uh, see if I can get this all taken apart here and the first thing I want to do is uh, take these two screws out here uh, or these two here I guess it doesn't much matter I need to get this here off of there I'm not worried about saving this motor I am worried about getting that little impeller off the other side without breaking it. Uh, it's been a while since I had this part. Maybe, maybe if I take these two screws here out, the motor and that impeller will come off all in one piece. Okay, so I finally get this off and I just basically had to get a bigger pair of pliers and I yanked that out and uh, that impeller is still floating around down in there but I can see that this has this bushing on here and I'm going to have to get that bushing off that's going to have to be adapted to this motor here and that baby is not coming out of there without a fight okay I finally got the little bushing off you can see that right there and I'm going to have to do a little straightening out and I've actually drilled it out. I drilled it out while it was still part way on the shaft to get it started and uh, it will go on but I, what I want to show you now is that not all of these motors that come out of uh, controllers or CD players or cassette players are created equal. Now these two look very much the same but if you'll notice, if I can get this turned right, the shafts are different lengths on them. And uh, I am going to use this shaft here. It looks like they're made by the same company. This one has a longer shaft sticking out the top. And that's what I need. I don't know if you can see that or not, but that's what I need to be able to get it to go down into here far enough to engage this impeller and uh, if you can see down in there I hope you can get my lights pointed in the right direction here let me see if I can get you over here you can see that see down in there you can see get the hair out of there yeah you can see my shaft is down in there see okay so I'm gonna have to get that bushing back onto that motor and then I'm probably gonna have to just uh, glue this motor in place because I don't have any mounting brackets for it. Uh, the other one that I did have out, this one here, had mounting brackets on it but then I lost my, it had to go in this way and I lost my depth and all of that good stuff. 
So I think what I'm going to do, put these out of the way, and uh, don't throw away your old CD players and Sony PlayStation controllers and stuff. Save those motors. They come in handy for all kinds of goodies. So that's what I do. I save them. And I save a lot of other parts out of those things too. Put this back up on the shelf. So I need to clean this up because there is some oil down in here. You can see. need to clean that up real good. And I'll clean this up real good. And uh, I will get this bushing on here. And as you can see, I think you can see, it's going to be a press-on fit. It's starting to go on already. Right. Test motor, make it sure it still works. Just holding the wires together. Push the button. You can see it's got quite a bit of torque on there. So my next thing is to solder these two wires together. And then I'm going to try pushing that puppy down in there and soldering it all and uh, gluing it together and see if we can get our whistle noise back. Well guys and gals, I have it all back together and uh, it's not a total success. It works. But I got something hitting inside. So anyway, there you have it. Okay, guys and gals, I'm back. I couldn't leave well enough alone. I had to get this thing working right, so I kept at it. And I finally think I have it down now. Let's take a listen. No more vibrating noise. You could hear the motor, but you could hear the motor with the original one, too. And uh, so there we have it, a successful upgrade. And we'll never have to worry about this one dying again for a long time.